Welcome to Medicine with Faizan. Today's lecture is about atrial fibrillation. As you can see in this pie chart, it makes up over two-thirds of the arrhythmia that we encounter in an emergency room, and so it's something that you would be recognizing quite frequently. So let's talk about what atrial fibrillation is. Atrial fibrillation is an electrical disturbance in the atria, where the electrical signals are chasing themselves round and round in different directions in a very disorganized fashion. Experts have described multiple wavelengths of re-entry going round and round in different directions. For the sake of diagnosing it on an ECG, I think this mechanism is pretty clear. Now, keep in mind that the AV node is going to pass some of those signals down. AV node is designed to act like a safety valve, and atrial rates during atrial fibrillation usually exceed 350 beats per minute. Now, the AV node really determines what the ventricular rate is going to be during atrial fibrillation. We use the term ventricular response to refer to how fast the ventricle is going during atrial fibrillation. So you can have atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response, a moderate ventricular response, or some people call it controlled ventricular response, and you can also have it with the slow ventricular response. And this refers to how fast the ventricles are going, and that's determined by the AV node. Remember, the AV node will not conduct as well at high rates. So even though someone's heart can go quite fast if they're in an organized atrial tachycardia, let's just say, or even sinus tachycardia, put it this way, and someone gets on a treadmill and we have them run to the predicted maximal heart rate, which is 220 minus your age. So if someone of 50 years old gets on a treadmill, you would expect them to be able to reach about 170 beats per minute. Well, when someone goes into atrial fibrillation, even at the age of 50, it's very unusual to see rates that high you'll usually see them in 130 to 140 range if someone has a healthy AV node. And that difference between a predicted maximal heart rate during an organized atrial rhythm, like sinus rhythm, and the atrial rates during atrial fibrillation has a lot to do with this phenomenon of the AV node conducting worse when the atrial rate is very high and the AV node is being bombarded in all different directions. But just remember, it's very important to understand the concept that the ventricular rate is determined by the AV node itself. Now, recognizing atrial fibrillation on an ECG is actually quite easy because instead of having discrete atrial activity, because you have this continual chaotic activity, what you generally see on the ECG is a very wavy, disorganized electrical signal. And then every now and then you see a QRSB complex, but there's no discrete P waves during atrial fibrillation. It just looks like electrical noise, in fact. Now and then the atrial fibrillation can become very coarse. We refer to atrial fibrillatory waves that are very large as being coarse atrial fibrillation. And sometimes they can get so big that it almost looks like a P wave because it coincidentally lands in front of a QRS complex. Now let's get to the first tracing. When you look at the farthest, what you expect to see during atrial fibrillation is that the ventricular rhythm is irregularly irregular. That means that there's no pattern to it. There's no group beating that you can recognize groups of twos or groups of threes which you see is maybe three or four fast beats, and then a pause, and you get a couple of fast ones, and a little less of a pause, and a little bit more. So there's no pattern to the irregularity, and that's why we call it irregularly irregular. Now when you try to calculate the rate, this is where three second marks can come in very handy. The idea is to count up how many R to R intervals there are in six seconds, and then multiply by 10. This rate is somewhere in the range of 70 or 80 beats per minute when you take into consideration these long pauses. And when we look to see what the rhythm is, we're looking at the baseline and we see all this sort of rapid undulating effect. These little peaks here are less than 200 milliseconds apart, so the atrial rate is clearly way above 300 and likely faster than 350 beats per minute. Sometimes you get big fibrillatory waves, and sometimes they get to be so small you can barely see them. Look at this long stretch in V1. This is pretty typical for what's known as fine atrial fibrillation. That means you can see it, but it's very small and it's almost hard to recognize, especially here in V2. So just make sure that you're dealing with an irregular rhythm, that there are fibrillatory waves on the baseline in between the QRS complexes, that there's not a consistent P wave in front of each beat that you could sometimes see if you're dealing with a sinus rhythm with very frequent atrial premature beats. And the more you see this, the easier it becomes to diagnose because you begin to recognize it almost immediately. Let me show you some more examples so you know how easy it is to diagnose it. But I also want to show you some things that you need to worry about so that you don't make the wrong diagnosis. So take a look at this ECG. It's quite visible that there is some irregularity. The QRS complexes are clearly not marching through at a regular rate. 
If you try to look for a pattern in it, you won't find one. That's the hallmark of atrial fibrillation, and it's irregularly irregular. There's no real pattern to it. If there was, you would call it group beating and start looking for some kind of second-degree AV block. But atrial fibrillation should be irregularly irregular. The rate here on average is about 80 or 90 beats per minute, and we will keep that in mind when we label this arrhythmia. Looking at the R to R interval, the longer intervals are where you're more likely to be able to see what's happening, and what you can see is this undulation of the baseline. The key here is that the baseline does not have a consistent electrical signal. Remember, the difference between atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter is that in atrial flutter the signal is going round and round in a circle, or less often there's a focus that's firing rapidly, and the signal is spreading rapidly across both atrial in a very consistent manner. Either one of these situations gives rise to a very discrete, very reproducible, very consistent atrial signal that is regular, and each beat looks the same. These flutter waves should look the same in the same lead over time. So the difference is atrial fibrillation is more of a chaotic problem. The signal is traveling in different directions, and it never really takes the same pathway twice. And so there should be no pattern to the electrical signal that you'll see. In fact, if you look at V1, you might be tempted to call this atrial flutter. You've got these large, fluttery-looking, almost sawtooth waves here in V1 that clearly are going upright. But in this part of V1, you can see that those waves are now going down. So this is really more of a polymorphic or a variable, constantly changing rhythm. And even though it's on the slower side for atrial fibrillation, we call it coarse atrial fibrillation, to refer to the fact that the fibrillatory waves look very large, almost like flutter. In reality, the atrial rate may slow down briefly where it could be in the range of 300 beats per minute. But at other times during the arrhythmia, it actually may be quite a bit faster here, as clearly 350. The rate is constantly changing. The signal is constantly changing as well. And that's why we call this as a polymorphic arrhythmia, meaning the appearance of each individual signal varies over time. To sum it up, we have this irregular, irregular rhythm with this polymorphic, chaotic-looking baseline. In some areas, it looks like flutter, but clearly it's changing, and so it's not flutter. It's atrial fibrillation with a moderate ventricular response. Okay, let's look at the next one. This is one of those ECGs you'll see frequently in an emergency room, and when you first see it, it's very impressive, and the patients are usually rather uncomfortable. Glancing at the rhythm strip, you can see it's really quite rapid. The average heart rate here is over 150 beats per minute. It has to be in the range of 165 to 170. It's irregular. There doesn't seem to be any pattern. You get very rapid beats here. In fact, exceeding 200 beats per minute. If you look at this beat and this beat, it's less than three boxes. So we're talking over 200 beats per minute in this little brief area, and then it slows down a little bit further down here. But there's no pattern to it, so you have this irregularly irregular rhythm with a very rapid rate. Trying to accurately diagnose this as atrial fibrillation now is a bit of a challenge because you are really obligated to rule out other things. Things like multifocal atrial tachycardia or atrial flutter with variable conduction. And so it's important that you look in front of every single QRS complex, especially the ones with the longer R to R intervals, to see if you can get a sense of whether there is any kind of a consistent P wave in front of each beat, or whether there's a consistent flutter wave that's marching through the entire strip. You really have to look at every single lead, especially V1, and the inferior leads to look for flutter waves. Once you're satisfied that you don't see anything that looks like a discrete P wave or some kind of organized atrial activity, then you can call this atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. This one ECG is my all-time favorite. The first thing that should stick out at you is that the ventricular rate is extremely slow. In fact, if you look at this beat right here, find a heavy line and count off the milliseconds. One, two, three, four, that's one second. One, two, three, four, that's two seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, this would be 3 seconds. 3 seconds would be 20 beats per minute. So this is more like 22 beats per minute. So the ventricular rate of 22 beats per minute, what could this be? Well, you would want to look for P waves because this could be a severe sinus bradycardia. And you look at this and you ask, does that look like a P wave? Maybe it is. But, but then again, it's not really present in any other leads. So I suspect that's just an artifact. I'm pretty sure the patient just simply moved. What you should be able to notice is that the baseline has this very fine undulating pattern to it. It has this little sense of atrial fibrillation, continuous irregular, 
almost noise-looking signal. So this rhythm is atrial fibrillation. Now should we should call this an atrial fibrillation with a slow ventricular response? That is the main question. To answer this, let's look at the underlying mechanism which is far more interesting. If we take our calipers and move it to the first R to R interval and set it there, and then check the next R to R interval, we'll see it's about the same. And the third R to R interval is same as well. So the ventricular rhythm here is regular. But we talked about the hallmark of atrial fibrillation being an irregular, irregular ventricular rhythm. So how do you explain the fact that these QRS complexes are very regular? Well, this has to be some kind of escape rhythm. In other words, during atrial fibrillation, the AV node determines how fast the ventricular rate goes. But because you've got these very rapid signals hitting the AV node, the AV node is going to let a random signal get down to the ventricles which gives rise to this irregular ventricular response. But if you have complete AV block, then what happens is none of the atrial fibrillation signals gets through. Instead, what you get is some kind of escape rhythm coming from either the AV junction or the bundle branch or Purkinje system. So the fact that you've got this heart rate of 22 beats per minute and the QRS is rather wide, you will have to call this an idioventricular escape, which probably coming from the Purkinje system. But the rate is consistent with an idioventricular rhythm. And the fact that it's regular tells you that it's an escape focus and not just simply slowly conducting atrial fibrillation. So you would call this strip atrial fibrillation with complete heart block and an idioventricular escape rhythm. Now, of course, you can have atrial fibrillation with a slow ventricular response, and you can see rates in the 40s and 50s, but the R to R interval should be irregular. If it's not irregular, if you have regularization of atrial fibrillation, that implies that you have complete heart block. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. That's it for today. See you in the next lesson.